everybody welcome to my Samhain video we have reached Samhain it is the end of a cycle this is the end of the wheel of the year and the witch's new year is upon us in this video we're going to chat about the symbolism of Samhain and also five ways to celebrate this pagan Sabbath and celebrate the end of this wheel of the year and the beginning of a new cycle so Samhain lands between October 31st and November 1st and as we all know it has been commandeered by Halloween but it is traditionally a pagan Sabbath a Celtic fire festival and also known as the witch's new year it marks the end of the wheel of the year and we are starting a new one um, with November 1st and this is a really really potent potent time for earth magic letting go and preparing ourselves to enter into our descent into the darkness with the moon Samhain is also the third and the last harvest festival in the Wheel of the Year. The first being Lamas, the second being Mabon, and now the third being Samhain. During this time, the veil between the spiritual worlds is at its thinnest, and so this is a really, really great time to do ancestral work, connect and communicate with the spirit world, and really cultivate your sensitivities and really become aware of the collapsing matrix if you will during this time. Samhain is really beautiful for so many reasons but it's really beautiful in that it really shows us shows us a perspective that death can be beautiful, the end of a cycle can be beautiful, and we are li literally in a time where we're saying goodbye and then starting a new cycle within a couple days and so this is a really great time to reflect on what you need to let go of what you want to bring in and also just you know really preparing yourself and your home energetically for that descent into the winter so this year in particular Samhain arrives just a couple days after the full moon in Taurus which is an earth sign and Samhain is a earth Sabbath you know it's about ancestors it's about our roots it's about earth magic it's about feasts and harvests and gratitude so this full moon in particular is going to signal um, an opportunity for you to really let go of something that you've been holding on to. This is going to be something that you have probably been pondering for quite a while or knew was coming and the energies with the full moon and with Samhain and everything that has been percolating in the world energetically this is all going to culminate in some very quick change and this may result in you taking action all of a sudden on something that has been kind of lagging in your life you know something that you've been really thinking about something that you've been working towards some of these things are really just going to happen you are going to make them happen and the universe is going to help you make them happen and so there's going to be some change coming with this full moon in Taurus and with Samhain. Because of these energetic sensitivities and shifts with Samhain and with this full moon, I really recommend protecting your energy. Really say no when you need to. This, you know, the summer is usually time to say yes. That's what I experienced this particular summer. But now it's the time to say no. Really protect your energy, guard your energy, ask for spiritual support, and maybe surround yourself with a few things that can energetically and spiritually support you. Like rosemary is a great ancestral herb. You can call upon your ancestors to bring you support during this time and protect you as the veil is thin and you become more sensitive. And things like smoky quartz and labradorite are really great to um, invoke spiritual protection. Labradorite is a really great one because it is a stone of things unseen. So particularly for Samhain, I really recommend surrounding yourself with that crystal or even just the thoughts of that crystal can take you far. So a few of the points of symbolism with Samhain are the gods that many people honor are the god of death Kali and Lilith, those are a few that people really work with. Working with the god of death is really great because you can sacrifice a part of yourself to the god of death 
to allow the space to flourish for something to be rebirthed or renewed within you. This is something I do every single Samhain. I do this with my group and I also do this on my own. This is literally my Samhain practice and whatever I sacrifice is it helps me start a new cycle and I literally work on releasing that through the entire next wheel of the year. There's been a couple of years where I've actually needed to repeat the things that I've sacrificed because they were so deeply ingrained in me. So for example, I might release self-doubt. Last year I released codependency. And so I am ending a cycle with releasing that. And it is a really, really powerful way to work with the wheel, the sabbats and the seasons and the cycles to act as a reflection of the growth within you and uh, help you expand your self-awareness. Frankincense, sage, rosemary, cinnamon, mugwort, these are some of the herbs that you can use at this time of the year. At Samhain, I always use the mugwort that I harvested at Maybon. That is one of my Maybon traditions and then I burn it at Samhain. And cinnamon, I've been working a lot with cinnamon this year. So these are some of the herbs that you can burn with Samhain to protect yourself, cleanse your space and create new beginnings. Colors are obviously black and orange, we know that because of Halloween, but the deeper symbolism here is that black represents the darkness and death and orange represents the setting sun. So let's jump into my five ways to celebrate Samhain this year. Tip number one is to make a Mullen Witch's Torch. Samhain is a Celtic fire festival and so the element of fire is very potent at this time of the year. And also earth is very prevalent at this time of the year, especially having a Taurus full moon this year. And the symbolism of ancestors really draws us into that earth element. So crafting a torch from something from the earth is kind of a double whammy situation and mullen torches are so beautiful they are so fun i actually made a video on mullen torches last year last samhain where i show you how to make them so definitely go check that out after this video i will leave the links for you it's really really fun mullen torches can actually burn for quite a long time i think something like a 10 inch torch has the capabilities of burning for about 40 minutes um so they are really long lasting, so natural, and it's just such a festive thing to do. Tip number two is to create an ancestral altar. This Sabbath is just all about the ancestors, all about our roots, all about our programming, and all of these things that really create our foundations, whether we are aware of these things or not. This Sabbath really brings us an opportunity to self-reflect and expand our self-awareness with the help of our ancestors and with spirit. So creating an ancestral altar is a great way to intentionally honor your ancestors and honor all of the energy and the stories that have come before you, whether this is your own personal blood lineage or maybe you're a witch and you just want to honor all of the witches who have come before you. If you are a person who wants to honor your ancestors or you're interested in doing this but you maybe don't feel comfortable honoring people within your lineage because of whatever reason, that is totally understandable. Um, what I would recommend there is to honor the essence of your ancestors, the essence of their soul, their spirit, that existed before they incarnated onto earth and had all these projections put onto them that ended up creating um, who they were and the shadows that, that they lived from. So honoring the essence of your ancestors is a really great way to, you know, not necessarily honor the things that they did if you don't agree with that. So for an ancestral altar, you could put photos of your loved ones, items and gifts that you have that represent them. You can put gourds and pumpkins and squashes, rosemary, any of those herbs or crystals, anything that you really feel like bones and branches, anything from the earth that um, has special meaning to you can go on your altar. Recently I was gifted my great-great-grandmother's wedding dress. Her name was Lily 
and which is Winnie's mom's name, <laughs> um, his first mom. And um, so that's really special to me. And I'm I'm trying to find a way to put that on display. I don't know if I can, but I was also re-gifted some of the letters that I wrote my Nana. Um, my Nana died on my birthday almost two years ago. I think this year would have been her 100th birthday. And I was ju literally just before I came here, I was reading some of the letters that I had sent her back in 2009. And on the letter she wrote, responded on October 30th. So I really loved that alignment and synchronicity and it makes me feel connected to my Nana. Tip number three is to build an ancestral cairn. So this is another way to honor your ancestors. It's, it's, kind of an altar but not it's a cairn so an ancestral cairn is essentially a collection of stones and rocks that have been um, built or or um, stacked on top of each other to create some kind of design it could be something that you know is more hollow or it could just be a, a little stone wall there are so many different ways that an ancestral cairn can look but it is built out of stones this year i built an ancestral cairn in my enchanted forest close to the stone circle after you've built it you can add to it over time and people can add to it you could add more stones crystals herbs anything like that but the foundation of the ancestral cairn is stones and so something that you can do is as you're putting your stones on it and building it or making your offering you can think about your ancestors or a loved one or think about something within your lineage that is important to you this is just a really beautiful way to have a reminder that you see because your ancestral cairn will always be there once you build it you don't dismantle it so it's it's an all the time reminder of the path that led you here tip number four is to have a feast so this is a common way to celebrate all of the harvest sabbat so lamas maybon and samhain have a feast but the difference with a samhain feast is that you're really having dinner with your ancestors you're having dinner with um, spirits that have passed and one of the common ways that people like to do this to have a feast with Samhain is have something called a dumb dinner and it's essentially a silent dinner you all sit in silence and it is a way to intentionally um, show you know respect and show attention to the spirit world as that veil is really thin tip number five is to start a new healing journey Samhain is the witch's new year Samhain marks the end of the wheel of the year and a new wheel a new cycle starts turning with november 1st so really set your intentions really release those last things that need to go that you need to sacrifice that you need to wash away and really really give yourself the space to think about some of the things that you really need to focus on within yourself and i recommend choosing something that you know that you need to work on so that it can be in an intention that you set for yourself for the entire wheel of the year so uh for example last year i sacrificed my codependency and so throughout the entire wheel of the year leading up back to Samhain i have been self-reflecting i've been expanding my self-awareness i have been journaling i have been doing my shadow work i have been really releasing my attachment to codependency looking at the roots of it looking at how i'm showing up looking at how other people are interacting with me in terms of this um, thing that i have this codependency on some other people in my life and as you set this intention the wheel and nature will reflect things back to you and it will bring you tests. It will bring you circumstances for you to move through that are going to help you to heal that and release it and become more self-aware. Really take your time to think about what you want to sacrifice to the God of death 
so that you can be reborn and rebirthed and allow the next cycle to help you move through that. We can't just expect to sacrifice and let things go and then poof, it happens. You have to do the work. And I feel like a lot of witchcraft content out there um, especially when it comes to short form content really give you these spells and these rituals that are like let go of this lover or let go of this and you'll get this and that is not how it works folks <laughs> that is not how witchcraft works you have to do the work and sometimes it can take an entire year of work to let go of that one thing so prepare yourself to start a new cycle to start a new healing journey and you know really prepare yourself to enter into that shadow work with the winter the winter is when we do our shadow work i do shadow work in the summer too but the winter is nature's time of creating a womb for you to go into to rebirth yourself with the spring but if you are new to all of this just know that the winter is nature's way of creating sacred space for you to go into your shadows with the moon and then come out um, feeling more empowered in the spring when the sun begins to return as well you are in a way offering this sacrifice in exchange for a blessing and the blessing will be the healing journey and everything that will come from that so those are my five ways to celebrate Samhain this year I just this is just such a beautiful time of the year especially if you're connected to the spirituality of it and the true symbolism and meaning and traditions of it Halloween is obviously thebomb.com <laughs> it is so fun i love getting dressed up for halloween i love the candy i love halloween and horror movies i love it all but when it comes down to the tradition of it as a witch as a pagan for me it just it is just one of the most profound times of the year and for me a Samhain feels like an, a self-initiation in some way i'm initiating a new cycle and so this is a really intentional time of the year for a witch and um, take it easy we can be really bombarded with energies whether we consent or not consent because that veil is really thin so really protect yourself this year and just really enjoy it as well in case you were wondering if i'm dressing up for halloween i am my friend is having a halloween party i'm going as lydia from beetlejuice in her red outfit this is a costume that i've really wanted to wear for years and i was like this is the year so thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the other side bye